Recall that we previously learned that electrons are waves with loops and that more loops means more energy. What is the minimum number of loops that an electron wave can have? In 1D, a one-loop wave looks like this. In 3D, we saw that single-loop electrons are called 1s and look like spheres. What is the maximum amount of loops that an electron wave can have? There is no limit to the number of loops an electron wave can have, and so the theoretical maximum number of loops in an electron wave is infinity. But what does a wave with n equals infinity look like? Here's a few potential examples, but we actually can't draw a wave with an infinite number of loops. That's kind of how infinity works. But let's see if we can't intuit what having an infinite number of loops would mean. Here's n equals 1 again, and here's n equals 2. What's the difference between these? That's right, the wavelength gets smaller as the number of loops in the wave increases. So as we keep adding waves, the wavelength of the wave keeps getting smaller and smaller. But recall that for waves, energy, which is proportional to frequency, is inversely related to the wavelength of a wave. That means that as the number of loops increases, the wavelength gets smaller and the energy of the wave gets larger. Eventually, after we've added an infinite number of loops, the wavelength approaches zero. This wave will stop behaving as a bound electron wave and will become detached from the atom. It flies away from the atom. This process of the wave becoming unbound from the electron is called photoionization. Let's go back to our energy level diagram and add n equals infinity. Let's take this ionization process. How much energy will it take to cause the electron to be ionized, or in other words, to reach the threshold? Recall this equation. Remember that we can find our delta E by using E final minus E initial. Let's first find E initial. We start with n equals 1, so our E initial is just negative 2.18 attajoules. Now let's solve for E final. Our N final is infinity, and anything divided by infinity is 0, so E final is equal to 0. Delta E is equal to E final minus E initial, so delta E is equal to 2.18 attajoules. This is I sub 1, the first ionization energy, of hydrogen. Well, hydrogen only has one ionization energy, since it only has one electron. But what would happen if the energy of the light were any larger? The unbound electron does not have the same limitations that our bound electron waves have. What keeps our 1D standing wave looking like this? It's because it is being held at the edges, and so we can only have 1, 2, 3, and so on, loops. This is like two people holding a jump rope. You can only make certain waves in the rope. But what happens if one person lets go? Suddenly, any shape or frequency wave is possible. That's what happens during photoionization. Once the electron is unbound from the nucleus, any frequency of light can be absorbed. That means that any frequency of light beyond the threshold will be absorbed, leading to ionization. But it only takes 2.18 attajoules to ionize the electron. So what happens to the rest of the energy? The electron takes this energy as it leaves the atom, and it flies away even faster. This becomes additional kinetic energy of the electron. 